Florida murder trial that began with a fight over loud music. Michael Dunn is charged with shooting an unarmed teenager. The defense now presenting its case. The big question, will Dunn testify? ABC's Ryan Owens is in Jacksonville and has the latest for us. Good morning, Ryan. Good morning to you, Robin. The defense says they only have one, maybe two witnesses left. The thing everyone here wants to know, will Michael Dunn be one of them? I was um, so afraid that I didn't have time to think. I only reacted. The prosecution rested Monday without showing the jury Michael Dunn's interrogation tape, where he admits to killing 17-year-old Jordan Davis after Dunn claims the unarmed teen pointed a weapon at him. It was either a barrel or a stick, but, sir, they're, they're, they're like... We're going to kill you. The defense is not allowed to enter the tape as evidence, so the only way the jury will hear Dunn's side of the story now is if he takes the stand. Oh my God, somebody's shooting. Somebody's shooting out their car. To explain why he fired 10 shots at an SUV full of teens at this Jacksonville gas station in November of 2012. How many separate gunshot wounds did you find to Jordan Davis's body? Three gunshot wounds. Prosecutors ended their case with graphic testimony from the medical examiner who performed the autopsy on Jordan Davis. She showed the jury the clothes the teen was wearing the night he was shot. The jury also got a look at the semi-automatic pistol that ended Davis's young life. Prosecutors say Dunn should spend the rest of his life in prison for killing the teen. They say in an argument over loud rap music. Very nice guy. So far, Dunn's defense has amounted to little more than a couple of character witnesses who say he's a good man. He pleaded not guilty, but will he take the stand to say more? The parents of the young man he killed hope so. The family wants answers, and only Michael Dunn can give those answers. So it seems odd, but they actually want to hear from their son's killer? They do. It's unfortunate in America that the, that the young black child doesn't get the benefit of the doubt. And this family wants to hear this guy explain why he didn't give their son the benefit of the doubt, why he had to make up these lies. Sunday is Jordan's birthday. He would have turned 19. His family says they would like to have a verdict, some sort of resolution by then. At the pace we're on, George, it appears they will at least get that. Okay, Ryan, thanks very much. Let's get more on this now from criminal defense attorney Roy Black. Played a big role in so many prominent trials down in Florida. Roy, thanks for joining us this morning. You heard how Ryan ended right there. The family of the victim wants to hear from Michael Dunn. Do you think he'll testify? Well, George, there's no doubt he will testify. If he doesn't testify, there's no defense. He might as well plead guilty. There's no evidence in the record right now to show self-defense. The only way he gets a self-defense instruction and he can argue it to the jury is if he takes the witness stand. So you think that's going to happen. You also think that the prosecution has overstepped a bit. Yeah, that's typical. This office does this all the time. They did it with Zimmerman, and they're doing it here. They've charged him with first-degree murder, which requires premeditation. This is really a manslaughter case. This is where people get into an argument, it gets out of control, and a shooting happens. This is not premeditated murder. This is not second degree with a depraved mind with ill will and hatred. This is really manslaughter. But let me just play devil's advocate there for a second. Premeditation doesn't have to occur over a period of weeks. The prosecution has shown that Michael Dunn had to take the gun out of the glove compartment, had to take it out of the holster, had to load it, and then had to fire the 10 shots. Sure, you can always go through steps like that to break it down and try to show more time. But premeditation means you knew the person before this. Something occurred. There was an argument. You went away and you came back. It's not where there's sudden combat and there's a shooting. No matter how many times you load the gun and what have you, that's not really premeditation. It's not planning. It's not cold-blooded. So take us inside your office here. You're representing Michael Dunn. How do you prepare him for the stand? Well, I would think right from the beginning, right after the first interview, you're telling him he has to testify. You're going over the questions. He's going to have to explain the fear that he was in, why he shot. Then he has to explain, why did you flee the scene? Why didn't you call 9-11? Why do you stay overnight in the hotel and then go home? He has a lot of explaining to do, and it's not going to be easy. So it's not, I mean, enough, lo- it's not enough for him to convince the jury that he saw a gun or that he thought he saw a gun? Oh, yeah. He has to show that 
there was a reasonable fear because self-defense requires it be an objective person reasonably in fear of their life. So there has to be something from these kids to show that he was afraid of them. Okay, Roy Black, thanks very much.